This podcast is not for human consumption. The views and opinions expressed are for the rehabilitation of dysfunctional West Coast, high altitude underwater Florida hairless, sea monkeys with disabilities. Enjoy the ride. We'll start recording. I wish that stupid thing wouldn't keep coming up. It's like, just so you know, we know you're using this platform to record, but we're going to tell you again. Hello, I am recording. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, you never know, dude. Might be secret shit. <laughs> right? Welcome back. Keys to the Jet. Coffee, ha- coffee store hour. No? Wow. Very, very low Keys. talking. Keys yes. to the Jet coffee hour. Yeah. Oh, peaceful. Episode nine. Episode Coming at nine. you live. Coming at you live. I'm Red. I'm Rhino. And I'm Blackbeard. Mm. I think Fab is off uh, dealing with some pool table stuff right now. Oh, again. 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 And Blackbeard, uh, Blackbeard went to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. He came back looking like an episode of Cool Runnings. So I got beads. Do you lean hot, hot, hot? I couldn't do that. <laughs> do you lean hot, hot, hot? <laughs> Dude, I think the monotone <laughs> voice is just hot, hot, hot. <laughs> He's a big fan of bobsleds now. I, I heard. Big fan of bobsleds. I heard he was uh, singing karaoke down there, but he only sung the song tequila. It's With just one drum. It's just one word. Yeah. Tequila. How you, but how would you say in Jamaica, though? Yeah, that's, that's a Spanish song. No, that's that's the whole point. You went down there for Jamaica, but you're like, I'm gonna sing tequila because they like it. Hey, hey, no, hey. they like coconut rum. Okay, yeah, man, I was there. <laughs> Listen, you guys aren't talking in the right coffee voice. Okay, Sorry. man, man. <laughs> <laughs> no accent, just man, man. Sorry, sorry, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Good good show for you today, fellas. Everybody. This is uh this is gonna be a great one, especially if we keep talking like this the whole time. Yeah, I welcome think. back to uh Keys to the Jet where the stories are kind of made up and nobody listens to us. And so. uh we hope that by talking like this we soothe you on your drive. ASMR stuff. <laughs> I know my boss is probably listening to this as he drives to work, hoping his tire doesn't pop on the side of the road. Oh good year. Yeah. Yeah. How many is he up to this? Listen five. Listen to the sound of the road (laughs) as it rumbles over the tires. Listen, let me tell you about the sound of the road, dude. Hey, he's at like he's at at like a hundred days. He hasn't blown a tire. Dang, dude. Hundred days. Yeah, when I would when I would drive back and forth from Bullhead to Nellis, it was like an hour and a half drive. And I would drive very early in the morning. I used to use the bumps on the side of the road as my alarm clock. Know what I'm saying? Driving by drift trail. there. That's why I want to buy a Tesla. That way I could just go, Tesla, go. Yeah, and be a corn star. You could be a corn star in it. No, I applied and I got turned down. <laughs> even even the even Bang Bros for the Bang Bus said the no. Oh yeah. I couldn't even be the weird guy in the back that they pick up and they're like, check out this porn star. They were like, No, you're done. Okay. That's why that's why you gotta go to other companies like Dog Fart or oh. like, you know, uh Tushy, like those, you know, where you don't see your face. No, you don't see your face. The tushy. <laughs> you were, you were. Right, pause, pause on the coffee thing. Why is it that they never show their face, right? But the dude looks like a like a circus clown experiment, and then it's like, is this a horse that we're watching that turned into a man? Oh, like and a... see, yeah, and then you see him, and it looks like a, a chunk from you know the the Goonies or or what's his name sloth. He, Sloth. Yeah. yeah, it looks like him. That's his face. Baby and... root. Yeah. Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's, he's just, a he's minotaur. Like, he's a yeah. minotaur sloth. Yeah. And she's she's like looking at him like, oh yeah, you're you're so good. And then he's like, <laughs> just just like, staring like, at her with his eyes going like, different ways. She's like, oh my god, spit my mouth. 
that's why they always pan down so you can't see his face. Yeah. Then you're like, is this a mini horse we're watching? Like, what the hell? Yeah. Nobody wants to see his face anyways. I know. <laughs> but I wish yeah. I was I was gifted like that. I don't want anybody to see my face. Just walk around like a porno. All you see is my lower fat torso and yeah. My horse. Speaking legs. of uh speaking of porns and people fucking uh I got a good scenario for you guys if you'd like to answer it. Be, mm-hmm. be awesome. I think we'll have to stop recording because this uh No. No, you'll be all right. You'd be all right. Uh, okay. Would you rather oh god bang Hulk Hogan with a vagine or would you rather bang Scarlett Johansson with a dick in what position? Hulk Hogan without <laughs> a vagine. <laughs> without a as vagine. is. <laughs> and what position? I want to see uh, <laughs> its configuration as seen on TV, please, in the clearance section. What position? All of them. All of them? I wouldn't stop. You'd be, like, <laughs> you'd be like, oh yeah, brother, right in your ears the whole oh, time. Yeah, brother, oh yeah, brother. brother, missionary. Looking see Blackbeard walking in with two beers. Like, <laughs> oh Whoa! yeah, brother. <laughs> Ripping shirts off. Sorry, you know? sorry, sorry. Two, two oat milks. I'm a Hulkamaniac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something, brother. Uh, have you seen yeah. that? Uh, that it's a really that... small dick, brother. <laughs> it's a really right. small dick, brother. But it'll do. It's like that clip of all the uh, wrestlers acting, saying all the gay shit that they clipped out and put yeah. in there. Have you seen the one where it's just air? Where it's just uh, Macho Man and Hulk Hogan? And it, it's just air with them breathing between um, them talking. Dude, it's no. fucking hilarious, bro. You got to watch it, dude. It's hilarious. You could tell there was so much cocaine that flowed through those fucking <laughs> rings. Dude. Cream of the crop. Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. That chalk with their hands is not chalk. No, yeah. no, it's not. That's pure Colombian bam, bam. You know what I'm saying? Hell Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen all those uh, things that Jake the Snake talks about and going through all that stuff? He, yeah, it confirms all that. He gets some crazy, crazy stories. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, going back to like the uh, porn star thing, like with Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura, yeah. uh, Adrian Chechek talks about how like they're basically, they feed you drugs. Like every shoot mm-hmm. you used to go to back in the day, there's just like, there's just a table. Oh. You pick what you want. And it's like craft think, services. Uh, mm-hmm. It was like craft name, services uh, of narcotics instead of like sandwiches. You've got like, yeah, it's like the U.S. food trucks, you know, over there shows up at your, your school to deliver you your chicken nuggies. Yeah. They just, they just deliver like Coke and blood, you know, Coke and Molly. <laughs> yeah. And here we have, we're supposed to have sandwiches, but yeah, we have uh black tar heroin. <laughs> you like that? Or would you like some Xanax? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to get you up. Oh, there's let's, probably a guy like... Uh, yeah, oh, John, let's get some methamphetamines here. John Cena, when he's in that movie, and he's like, he opens up the little tackle box, and he's like, I got Coke, Molly, meth, <laughs> Xanax. You ever seen that? Uh, it's John been a while. Cena? It's been a while, but yeah. Yeah, I, he, play, he plays oh, like yeah, this hardcore he's a drug, drug dealer. dealer. Yeah. Was that in a is. wrestler? With a... No, it was like with no. Tina Fey and... Uh, yeah. God, what's her name? Is it like Hall Pass? No. It's not Hall Pass, is it? No, I don't think it's Hall Pass. Great movie, by the way. Do you know that did you know that Germans like perfected basically methamphetamines to uh, yeah. give their their soldiers at the wolf pa- at the wolf wolf pack? Wolf den? So wolf packs are U boats. No, no, the wolf den. So there's like a wolf den in the forest, like a fucking secret yeah. fucking bullshit. So it's called the Wolf Slayer. Wolf, yeah, yeah. Slayer. Whatever, man. Sorry, I'm kind of a historian. Listen, America, all right? That's all I care about, right? Yeah, it's well, funny I, you mentioned that, like they perfected that, right? But I was talking about life. I mean, not perfected, but they, you know, one of the ones yeah. like listed or like one of the people who are like historically mm-hmm. kind of shown to use it to give their soldiers to stay up, you know? So it's just like the genetically modified, uh, like what they give pilots, the little pills. Yeah. To keep oh, they them go pills, right? So it, they're basically speed. It's just mm-hmm. re-engineered speed to keep them doesn't have all the nasty like uh, habit inhibitors and all that stuff in there, but that's what they use when they do those long flights. Oh yeah, I bet they're continent to continent. I bet the molecules, if you put them up, 
together they're really similar like i was meth and adderall they're i was talking to one of the pilots and he said that it's it's very like controlled right so you have to, like sign it out and they only give you like a certain amount of pills and you're only supposed to take them at certain times so they map out the entire flight and you have times that you're supposed to take it at and yeah. if you come back with more than what you are less than what you were supposed to take like it's serious charges against Damn, you but it's very controlled yeah it uh you know but with the german soldier thing i wouldn't expect Ooh. anything less especially especially with hitler he was on what was called vitamin 8 which is essentially a cocktail of narcotics yep so i mean would you it kept his parkinsons less. down i think yeah. he was the first one to have a doctor feel good if i don't remember yeah yeah i think so so i was just talking to my wife uh we were watching the show uh it's pretty good on who it's called like the good doctor it's about the okay. doctor with autism military history it's a pretty good show but uh a lot of the surgical things that they do in there where they're like fixing like your spine or like your brain and stuff like that a lot of those medical practices come from dr joseph mangala who is in auschwitz who did all these weird like horrible experiments to yeah. you know jewish people and i think only like a handful of them survived but uh like like brain tumors right instead of just like going in and they would just like rip it out basically and pull it out he found out that if you use the syringe with saline and just like squeeze it in the brain it'll just fall out naturally and no damage to the brain it's horrible that he did that to people over and over and over again but that's a standard practice nowadays that's yeah. how they get tumors out of the brain that's crazy and you know that's um uh do you like slayer you guys like slayer angel of death Angel of Death was written about Dr. Mangler. Yep. Yep. You listen to it. Murder to the Kingdom of the Dead. Infamous Witcher. I fucking love Slayer, bro. Mm -hmm. mm. Was it a. Uh, I got to see him on their retirement tour. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, you're fine. I'm sorry. I, I got to see him on their retirement tour. I think it was like second to the last show before they were done in Vegas, dude. Epic. Epic. What's his name? Uh. <clears throat> God, what's his, I forget the Jim Brewer the comedian on those looks like he's high, but it's mm -hmm. just like his natural face. He yeah. talks about he took his wife to a Slayer concert and he's like, you know, we're we're in our 40s, 50s, you know, we're sitting down and I've made money. So we're close to the stage. And he's he's like, you know, all these bands get on before then. And he's like, so Slayer gets on and all the lights go down and there's like a Viking horn that sounds and it's like release the slayer fans and they all just started storming yeah. the stage and he's like my wife was like what the hell hell yeah he's like every man for himself babe every man <laughs> for himself. probably like epic walls of death and just raining blood you know because they, yep. they have that song and yep. fucking i i wish i could have seen him when when i was younger but you know at least i got to see him before they went out you so break a hip now i know right Dude, so it's always weird old, to see the uh, Molly. Just like, like just like Rhino getting old, man. It was born in the nineties, dude. Yeah, I know. Nineteen nineties. <laughs> yo, dude, that, I, I that feel post old, is so fucking funny, dude. That post, so, so good uh, with the crying babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I put it. I I was at work and I put it on, and then the crying babies, and just it was yeah. it was very loud, very loud. <laughs> I laughed very hard. <laughs> I was gonna say it looks more like Mayer because he was, you know, he's a veteran from the 1900s. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, kind of, kind of looks like Mayer. Like you see the old man, you're kind of like, oh man, he definitely has butterscotches in his pocket he's, right now. <laughs> hey, I got these butterscotches. Well, no, some of them have moved to Werther's or like butter the, run. the cream savers, mm -hmm. you know, with the strawberry. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes or the peppermints. They might go old school and go peppermints. Or hey, I got this here uh, double mint gum. You want some? It's fuck, dude. That, <laughs> that part in the the episode still gets me. Is like he's just basically telling us to go fuck off, and then Red's like, "You want a butterscotch?" <laughs> 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 I die every time that comes up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you kids, fucking get off my lawn. Here's a butterscotch. Hell yeah. Or mayor. He's my like. Day. When I was a supervisor, we had an inspector that was assigned to my jet, and uh, he used to always bring butter rum. That was that was amazing. He was a, I think yeah, he went to Nam, so he, you can imagine how old he was. What's butter mm. rum? What is that? 
it's the same. It's but instead of using scotch and butterscotch, they use rum, butter rum. Same Different thing. Different flavor. Yeah. Little candies, well, same thing. Well, you being <laughs> Blackbeard, you would rather have rum than scotch anyhow, I would think. Of course. Yarr. <laughs> Ye old butt pirate. <laughs> Why would I not want of course rum? Welcome back to Coffee Talk Shop coffee or hour. whatever the fuck coffee hour with butter rum. When you're when you're uh, editing this, you gotta put in like that smooth jazz every time this comes on <laughs> <laughs> in the background. That's smooth jazz. Yeah. Easy listening. Or, or like NPR. Is this what they do the whole time on NPR? I haven't listened to NPR in forever. Do you know what NPR is? Yeah, I haven't listened to it in forever. It's like Nazi public radio or something like that. Democrat, yeah. Nazi, and, same thing, right? And, Y'all don't say talk sense. like this. <laughs> Y'all don't say talk like this. But to all our listeners, just chime me in. We said we were never going to talk politics on this show. Yes. But here we are. That, that's not political. Thanks, Red. Well, we're talking about Nazis and Democrats, so <laughs> if we it's kind of close. Political, it's... Then it's not political, right? <laughs> this it recognizes that something different. This podcast is deemed non-political. <laughs> I love this. And just just take that recording of my voice and just play it every five seconds. <laughs> this this coffee talk stuff, I love it. Uh, <clears throat> so, some things that I was thinking we should talk about today. Anybody have any ideas? Go ahead with your black beard. I I'll start with something. the. Uh, so I, I'm sure you all remember this, but whenever you're we not, get a new you're guy, not, you're not doing it. I can't. Whenever we would get a new guy in the squadron, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Blackbeard should do it because this sounds very creepy. Uh, wait for the here comes the ginger laugh. For all you folks waiting for that laugh to come back to the last episode. <laughs> Don't watch this video. Okay. <laughs> we would always see. All right, I'm good. Go ahead. <laughs> Red's, uh, Red's, Red's laugh is referred to as the, the tuna chuckle. <laughs> all right. <Ooh>. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. I got to gather myself here. <laughs> what happened? I'm we dying. Happened? I'm, I'm dying inside, but what I'm trying happened? to be professional, you know? This isn't a professional Hold podcast. Down. You can't be professional here. Uh, we all know how the new guys would come in and you'd always push their buttons. <laughs> you just and... grab the mic. <laughs> Why are you grabbing it? Trying to do coffee talk like we're sitting here with our microphones. I'm very intrigued on the new guys coming into the squadron. <laughs> I wish I could talk like uh, the hormone monster from uh, Please. Big Mouth. Please continue. Please continue. Did anybody seen that show? No, uh, yeah. That. Yeah. And he's just like. So everybody knows how like a new guy would come in and you'd have to push their buttons and haze them a little bit or a lot of bit. To see who they are and get them to fit in, but we had this. <laughs> the one story that comes to mind: there was this guy who was back at Tyndall, but we got a new guy from uh, some other this base. Was, I think it was Tindall? a fifteen guy. At Tyndall, yeah. At you don't Tindall. say. I'd stop talking. Go Blackbeard. <laughs> listen, listen. This, you got- this is not <laughs> an episode of Black Raw. Hey, let's continue. I got saliva on Monique. It's not, t- it's not tushy. Uh, but no, the, the story I'm thinking of, we had this guy, I think he came from like Kadena or somewhere, I don't know. But he was a 15 guy, brand new guy, and he was, oh, I guess I can say his name, but we call him Creasy Bear. So if you're listening to Creasy Bear, you know who you are. And I hated this guy when he first showed up. He was trying to be a buddy buddy with everybody, but nobody really knew him. So I would just dog the shit out of him every chance I get. There was one time like he would we were all eating in the break room or whatever and he'd come and sit down with us and I'd always tell him to get the fuck out of here. I'm not eating with you. Move to the other side of the fucking room. Eventually he he got the hint and he fucking came around and he was a good guy after that. But there was lots of people that we would just push their buttons. Actually he 
dressed up as me at a Halloween party once. It was, it was pretty good. But wow. The How was the sex? Oh, it was pretty damn good. There was a blow-up doll involved. Good times. Sweet. Fair enough. The uh, Petrolatum. Mm-hmm. Always. When do you not use pet? Classic. Classic. It's like, what's the difference between uh, jam and petrolatum? You just never heard that joke? What's the no. difference between jam and jelly? It must be a... Uh, Oh, well, thing. we know jam and jelly, of course. Yeah, can't jelly, can't jelly your dick in somebody's ass. You can jam yeah. it. Yeah, you should have said it like this. Coffee talk. Mm-hmm. Continue, your Blackbeard. Coffee talk, continue. I don't want to know. What is, <laughs> no, what, go ahead. Go ahead. What, is, what, what, is, uh, what does Fab have to say? Go ahead, Fab. Continue, Blackbeard. Fab, where are you? <laughs> First off. Oh shit! He wants you. He wants you to. Stay. Yeah, there was other times. Don't you remember, like just pushing people's buttons until they they explode? Like there was another guy. He had really thick glasses. I'm sure he listens to this. We just call him Radar. But uh, we would always constantly push him, try to get him to blow up. Like any chance we would get, we just <laughs> fuck with him and fuck with him and fuck with him until he exploded. And that was always a good time watching people explode and lose their fucking minds. Mm. You guys never did anything like that? Interesting. Oh, yeah, we did. So uh, I would fuck with new guys like a lot. Like, because, you know, I got we all got fucked with when we Mm -hmm. we started, especially in the truck. When we're sitting in the truck, fucking I was just you could ask a lot of these guys we still talk to. Probably most of these guys. uh, I was just a ruthless asshole and was like, you know, just talking shit the whole time just because I learned Mm -hmm. from guys above me. They were talking shit to me the whole time. It's about thick skin, bro. It's about thick skin, you know? I just picture that the picture that Mayor sent just read in that configuration just as a contractor just talking shit to everybody. Just, I, I F- love... Feed me M&Ms. Dude, uh, the best time fucking with new guys was when we were grounded. So, 15s, I probably already told this story. The after the one split in half? Yeah, over after the one split yeah. in half over fucking St. Louis, we were grounded yeah. for like six months. We had nothing to do. So we would end up, I had the idea, or some of us had the idea of hunting new guys. Ooh, so yeah, we would hunt the new guys. We'd grab fucking duct tape. We'd grab uh, zip ties, the fucking strap lock, or strap lock, Ratchet straps. Um, <laughs> ratchet straps, tie down straps. Um, we tied this guy... We hogtied this crew chief and put him on an avionics cart. And then we're, you know, we're like, he was literally hogtied. Yeah. He get, he was pissed off. And then we were carting him around the squadron and the flight line. And then there was this other kid that we tied to someone else. And I think I already said this, but we tied him nut to butt or we tied him uh, on 69 Ooh, in support. One. Yeah, we tied him up and he started crying. Mm. He was like, my, my mom used to do this to me. Oh. Whoa. Started crying. Whoa, yeah, like whoa. we hit, we hit like something, dude. It was crazy. <clears throat> Another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. With some yeah. of the maintainer humor that you just laugh about. Yeah. Another one. His head we, fucking, it, but. we would tape to fucking palm trees because there's a fuck ton of palm trees out there. Um, yeah. Duct tape them to picnic tables. We would. Uh, tape them up and then take them. I think we've taken them down to your squadron multiple times mm-hmm. and put like signs on them that said Raptors suck or fuck Raptors. Yeah. I remember seeing and, people like that. Or we drop them off down at the Navy that said, uh, you know, some shit whenever mm-hmm. the Navy was TDY or whatever, you know. Um, but it was always a good time fucking with new guys. It was so much fun. I remember so finding fun. people's like EPs or whatever and fucking with them. But there was this one, it was a chick actually. She left her, I think it was EPs or the line badge, one or the other. But we we froze them like a little bag at first. And then we yeah. put it in a bigger bag and bigger bag. And we eventually got up to a fucking trash bag. So her EPs were in this oh, giant shit. ball of ice. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that was pretty good. Someone froze my uh, blouse, like shirt, the mm-hmm. my fucking BDU shirt. Someone fucking stuck it in a Ziploc, yeah. wet, and just put it in the fucking uh, freezer, dude frozen and i went to go home i was like what the fuck motherfuckers i don't know who that was yeah. i found my eps frozen solid dude oh, man, we uh we used to steal new guys uh blouses or the tops and then sell them at the snack bar oh 
That's oh, good. Make wow. buy it back. Yeah, we'd put it on a little hanger and price <laughs> price price tag it. We had a little price tag done. Click it. And IDs. IDs. Or, I think it still happens now. Whenever you find somebody's ID. Oh, that's a huge no no yeah. these days. We did that to one guy and we uh riveted between two plates of sheet metal his oh. ID in there. That's good. Yeah, it was always good messing with people's IDs. That was they leave them in there and you just fucking fuck them up everywhere. Destroy that cack. <laughs> hey, let me see your cack. Yeah. <laughs> I can't find it. Look up on the roof. Yep. Taped to the ceiling fan. That was a good one. It's, yeah, it's got tape over it and like moustaches and shit all, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or you put a piece of tape over the reader so when they yeah. put it in the computer it doesn't work. <laughs> that shit was awesome. It's that shit all the time. Yeah. It's the little things, you know. It's the yeah. little things. It makes the hard times fun. We would always go to this uh like a little Chinese restaurant right outside the base in Little Rock and this dude would always get like Coca-Cola. I'd take the soy sauce packets and I would just squeeze it in his Coke. Ooh. So he'd shake it up and he'd come back like, all right, let's eat this shit. And he'd just take a big old gulp. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Very salty. Tough. Very salty Coca-Cola. You, you made him tougher. You toughened him up. And that's what essentially mm-hmm. what we were doing. We were trying <clears throat> to make sure that they had thick skin in the truck because not only were we quoting movies, but we were also talking shit to everybody, regardless of who they were. We, we had a dude... This is like when I was a brand new airman and, you know, you, you always get in the, like, as soon as you get there, right? Like you get in the back of the truck and there's like all the crusty senior airmen that are sitting back there, veteran guys or whatever. And one guy would start talking about, he's like, yeah, my, uh, don't mess with me. Cause, uh, my wife found that out the other day. She was pissing me off cause she wouldn't do something. So I just came out of the room naked and I took a shit in the living room floor. Wow. Amber heard and made her clean it up. And we're all like, kind of weird. I don't it's believe kinda, that. And people are like, abuse. No, no, he he literally did that because she called the squadron because <laughs> he shit oh, in the middle of the floor oh my God. Oh. and he went to work. <laughs> Dude, I when I was a crusty senior airman on days uh, doing launch and lounge, you know, waiting for if somebody needed help or whatever, I was a floater. Uh, I would sit in the back with one of those fucking like uh, cardboard tubes. I think the the uh, Soka pads came on it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking mm. about? Yep. And I would sit in the back with the windows open, both windows of the expedite truck open and use it as an oar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> use it as an oar and it'd be my pirate ship. So be, we'd be going by people and I'd be yelling at them in a pirate voice and like looking down the tube and shit, talking to the expediter, you know, shooting the shit with him. He was, I mean, he was laughing the whole time he was with it. It was fun. It was a good time. And they called me uh, multiple times. I've been called Mikey fuck around because I like to fuck around on the flight line. The whale off the starboard bow. Instead of working, <laughs> there she blows. Her. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it was like that. It was good times. Yeah. It just made the day go by. You know what I mean? And then it was like, up, oh, day ship, time to go home. Sorry, guys. I gotta go. But yeah, uh, that's one thing about working at ATC and you only get an eight hour day is like, hey, yeah. let's fuck around all day. Yeah. Instead of doing the BPO and then turn a BPO over to swings when the jet's been down since noon. <laughs> That never happened. Yeah, we just couldn't do it, man. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of time. I was waiting on a fuel truck. Or that whatever. never happened. Picking we would fly ass. all the time. I mean, on like the 43rd where it was like, you know, six went out, six taxied, and then like five taxied back and one went up for like <laughs> around the pole. And then it was like, I, I guess we did our mission. That was a that was a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> really hard day. And then it was like guys who only had 22. And probably now 35 experience think they're God's gift to fucking maintenance because they yeah. fucking do a little computer. Boop, 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 boop. They've never had to chase paper TOs when the fucking yeah. jet turns the other way and all your TOs go boop, all over the place and you're <laughs> just trying to catch them along with your forums. Oh my never, God. They've never That's experienced what, that shit. They definitely don't understand the, uh, the old 781 A's where you're trying to sit there and especially if you're the only seven level. And you got to go through like 22 jobs, just oh, signing, you got to sign the red X and you got to sign off all the little warning tag things. Then you got to sign your you little initial sign your IPIs and you got to fuck it. Yeah. It's, and then, and if you have FIs out there along mm-hmm. with all your paper shit, that's blowing, you know, and the wind was con- wind is probably constant. Any fucking air force base. I'm not going to say it was just a Tyndall 
but the wind would come through and it would just blow our fucking forms off and blow fucking fi pages and i mean the worst was when a dude left his so we had a toolbox tiny small toolbox with uh the to's in it up on top you remember that yeah the to bag well we had a bag oh we had a 15s we had a box up on top oh and so he left it open with like two or three TOs open and the mm-hmm. jet instead of going out like that, where the way it's supposed to, mm-hmm. he didn't tell him that he was turning the other way and he turned and then you just see a big puff and he's right there up in the front row and alpha alpha row. Yeah. And just, it goes fucking everywhere. You see the fucking <laughs> expediter, uh, B flight expediter, a flight, and then the pro super pull up and trying to, trying to catch it all and shit. Yeah, Everybody running fun. out of the truck trying to grab fuck, paper. Bro. Yes. <laughs> that was one thing I didn't miss when I moved on to the electronic TOs. But the one thing I did miss about paper TOs is when QA would show up and you didn't have your TO open and you could yeah. blame it on the fucking wind. I, I don't yeah. know. I had oh, the yeah. wind blew it closed. <laughs> uh, fucking, I shut it down. I don't know. Yeah. No, I wasn't using this to prop my, put my knee on. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> fucking QA I was coming out harassing me and shit yeah 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 quality always coming out harassing people damn quality going back to raptors though uh i'm i'm sure you guys don't remember it because you don't really work raptors in the beginning but no shit we would red ball or cancel a flight for light bulbs seriously wingtip lights or landing taxi lights they would blow constantly we went fucking we had back orders for fucking wingtip lights, the bulbs that we couldn't fly because the jet was down. So we were canning wingtip lights, <laughs> so fucking jet to jet, so we could fly. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Is this yeah, be, is this like before they switched to the LEDs? Yeah, it's it was the first design, I guess, of the wingtip lights. Hey, it was pretty go bad. Down to the fifteens, grab some, see if they'll work. I think we tried that, but they're a Bro, I'm, different. Pro, I'm sure you yeah. did. <laughs> We had the same thing on the so on the, the tail end of the 130. We called them the beaver tail lights, but it was two little green lights. And they needed them so at nighttime when they're doing formation flying, you could see where the the tail end was at night. And they would constantly go out. And they were just these stupid little like 110 bulbs. Like you get in like the multi-pack or whatever from support or whatever. So I had like 10 of them in the little sleeve. Yeah. And they were non-traceable. So like, you know, not, no crew chief ever had a scrounge bag. No. But, no. That was frowned upon there was a time where it was like that. we didn't G105. we ran out of light bulbs and then you get you'd have to go to truck to truck to get people that had their scrounge back to get light bulbs that was great where'd you get that don't worry about it hey man don't you don't listen don't you worry about that i ain't got nothing in here we had a dude that had like wheel spacers in his bag we had i mean i'm sure that you guys had a designated row of lockers where you had yep. fucking shit All that you the parts all, all the parts. <laughs> Someone would come out with a PTO shaft. Weird, huh? Like, hey, man. hey, man, we got to order a PTO shaft. Hold on, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Where the fuck did this come from? Supply. <laughs> yeah. Lockers can hold a lot of parts. <laughs> V-band clamps for Do fucking... You, can oh, you imagine yeah. that nowadays? Man, oh they lose their shit no. if you have any oh scratch. My gosh. Dude, you, you'd have people... And this allegedly, I don't, I don't know for sure. You would have, I've heard stories of people stuffing shit up in the, the, the tiles, you know, the roof tiles, uh, all kinds of stuff. Allegedly, at one of the places I used to work, Alleg- we had Alleg- a crackdown of all the scrounge, and we had to get it all turned in. We had the amnesty program, and mm-hmm. we had a whole entire parking lot, like an aircraft parking lot, filled with parts that had to get mm-hmm. processed and turned back in. Oh shit! <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was cleaning the, bath- the bathrooms the other day, and they they were uh, they were doing that at our work. They were Again. walking around, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were looking for uh, for stuff. Mop and, handles. Uh, yeah, I, I was getting mad because I kept walking through where I was mopping. So, it uh, sucked. yeah, I had gotten a turnover that that was happening when I was like <clears throat> trying to get new bottles of Simple Green hmm. to to for the Zimbabwe. Uh, why are you still using Simple Green? I thought you were supposed to use Fabuloso. No, I like Simple Green. Right? The purple they use pur- now. Purple Fabuloso smells way better. You remember being in tech school and having the like fifty-five gallon drums of Simple yeah, Green? With the fucking, with so the, fucking on, the handle yeah, and on the tidy like, Friday. Rrr, 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 and you gotta rrr, 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 clean yeah. the whole fucking hanger and the jets. 
you have this giant drum of simple green, you're wiping down everything with it. I wonder if they still do that. Did you hear Sorry. a fan? I thought I heard something in the background. I thought I thought it was fan for a second. <laughs> Maybe. It said it take it said take a message. <laughs> it said take a message. Uh yeah, dude. I always like those big fucking fifty five gallon drums of uh of uh simple green. We used one at the first. We had like a bunch at the first down, you know, hanger one. Down mm-hmm. right? Tyndall. Down yonder. And when I was hanger D or hanger defense, we used it quite often. Uh, I had my name on the side of the mop bucket and on the side of the Zimbabwe. And it was fun. So it's funny you mentioned like the the Zimbabwe, but when I was at uh took my year off after the military and I was working at tractor supply and uh I would get all my minions that I worked with and uh one of the other managers as well. And instead of using like the company provided floor cleaner or whatever in the little handheld Zimbabwe that would go down the aisles, we would go to like Dollar Tree and buy like the giant bottles of fabuloso and dump that oh, whole yeah. thing in there so anytime before the district manager showed up we'd have because it was t- it was during covid so they we always had to clean the floors and stupid policies or whatever so i just have that one dude just do the whole store constantly with fabuloso and we walked out of the front of the store and came back in and it was so strong does it smell <laughs> fabulous it smelled good but the district manager came and he was like wow that's clean Wow, you can smell you can smell that as soon as you walk in. <laughs> Great, because you get so much and you can use so little. Like and it, oh, we use the whole the bottle. No, we just use the whole bottle. You use it on everything in the house. You use it on the dog. You can use it on the birds. You can use it on the snake. We give a snake bath, fabuloso. I mean, we actually don't do that, but I mean, you probably could. But it was it was funny because he put in like his little district manager notes when I was oh I was visiting the store in Palmdale and and it's. It was smelled very, very clean in that store. All right. it's, it's almost overbearing because you get the old people and they're like, I'm trying to get my corn feed for my, my chickens and it just smells I mean, like fabuloso. In here. I they need to do that in the hangers because, you know, I, I tried to uh, get them to do that. And we set up the, the little handheld Zimbabwe for them. They need they to use some fabuloso. They don't use that shit. Can you imagine how clean the floors would be in there? I've never seen those things clean. Mm-hmm. Never. There was uh there was one dude. He uh he did it not with Fabulosa, but he sat there all day just back and forth in that little little Zimbabwe. Mm. It was one stripe of white. Was he was no, he, it? He, he he did the whole uh you know the the, the pull through and the hanger they you mm-hmm. know they go side yeah. to side. He did that whole thing just all day. Was he a three level? No. He was I working remember, on his five level. I remember when I was an A1C like and hanger D. I had to do the entire hanger. The whole thing was open. We had the new, clean, shiny white floors. And they're just like, all right, get to it. What? Get to what? Zimbabwe. Whole hanger. Done by the end of the day. That's considered oh, hazing fuck. now. You can't <laughs> haze them. No joke. But oh, even, even before okay, then, yeah. though, well, not even then, but now they go so fast on that thing. It's like, dude, go it slow. Get it clean. Yeah, go slow. And let it work. Like, you can't just be going full speed on that thing. Cleaning tips with, with the janitors. <laughs> Cleaning tips. Yeah, it really, or, really grinds my gears. Okay, grinds my <laughs> gears when they don't use magic erasers too. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Why? You know? Who? Like, why, no, why does nobody do that anymore? Like magic erasers. You remember <laughs> magic erasing airplanes? No. Well, not you. Not you. You can't. You can. I could. Yeah, I could. We used to use AeroClean and the little spray bottle and fucking magic erasers all day, all day before the pilot came out. You know, because you were looking for, hey, I, um, I want to go home early, or you know, so we had uh, in our our wash rack. White wheels win wars, dude. Damn right. <clears throat> that was a good thing about being on the fucking LO jets, especially in the beginning. We have nothing to clean them. Sorry, they're dirty. Yeah, you can clean the wheels. And the struts. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah, we we, we had like, uh, yeah. we had soapy water like mix that we could spray on there and it would get some of it off, but not a yeah. lot. That was like the only thing you could use on it though. Dude, coming from the fifteens and then going into sixteen world is, is the same, right? Because you got you you're like, I gotta keep my jet clean, you know, prideful. Mm-hmm. That's my jet, I'm gonna keep it clean. You go to the A ten squadrons, dude, nothing is fucking clean. Nothing is clean. (laughs) 
whatsoever. And they're like, dude, gun gas, bro. It's all about the gun gas, dude. That means your your fucking jet uses the gun like a lot. Showing it off. It's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. But have you ever heard of like, you know, anti-corrosion techniques? <laughs> you know, there's a TO for this, right? Uh, uh, no. And then so a lot of us from the fighter world that went over and we were, we were working with the mayor, uh, we would have to clean. We were like 15, 16 guys would go out there with spray fucking aero clean wiping it down and then like core a 10 guys were like what the fuck are you doing bro that's like sacrilege dude that's blasphemous bro <laughs> yeah but i got the cleanest fucking jet out here dude i mean it doesn't doesn't mean we could look at how many code ones i have compared to how how long yours has been broken but mine's still cleaner right take the uh isopropyl alcohol wipes or whatever because you can't use uh like tire foam or anything like that on the tires but if you clean the tire with it it just evaporates, but it cleans all the shit off your tires. So your tires look like they're straight, brand new, like black walls. Mm, I never clean the tires, just the wheels. Just clean the... Just yeah. the we, we would only do that on wheels. the OT side. If there's like a DV or something coming through, you know, you like clean it real quick. So it looks yeah. nice or whatever. What was that uh, at Tyndall? What was that competition everybody had? It was like once a quarter or something oh, for each squadron. Had- the cleanest jet or in the launch, they would be graded. For everything yeah and then they have those fucking rad coveralls with yeah. like their stripes on them and their names on oh, dude i was so jelly i wanted that's to do where that, patches man. o'houlihan came from i want we to used that. to make fun of because he had he wore that constantly <laughs> he had patches everywhere patches o'houlihan <laughs> if you can dodge a wrench and you can dodge a ball yeah. just remember the five d's of dodge there jimmy dodge duck dip dab and duck dodge i think Dodge I forgot how many I just named, but yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Cleaning, cleaning airplanes. That was yeah. my favorite thing. My favorite thing, which is why I'm a janitor now, because I learned how to clean hangers, break rooms, bars. Because we had that's the, why you know, you're we the, had the you're the quality we the janitor. The, we had the bars on the squadron, mm-hmm. and then we had to clean airplanes, which is the wheels and all the panels and all the front, and you just you know, you just get you clean a lot. Then you go out, and if you got in trouble, you had to go clean the like fucking grounding points with uh, a vacuum, and you a know, spoon. and Plastic a spoon. spoon. You had to clean a lot. You know, and then oh, you Red, had to. Red, I have a story for you after this, by the way, when we're not recording. <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> that, for that one. I'm that, ready that, for that one. That just happened the other day. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Oh shit! Okay, but that that's why you're our quality engineer janitor because yeah. you you keep up with our quality specs and how we're cleaning. Listen, and then if we get if we don't do it right, then you write me up. I'm, uh, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you're, you're like that dick quality and quality guy, but you're you're our dick. So yeah, yeah, real hard dick. <laughs> you're, you're nice I can fuck this dick. <laughs> <laughs> real hard dick, but a nice dick. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. You know, Gotta get on uh, my knees, brother. <laughs> you know, one other thing that uh. Uh, I wanted to bring up too on this episode is so uh, you're on mids or you're on swings, fuck day shift, whatever. You're on mids or you're on swings. It's close to the end of shift. You're like, man, it's been smooth as fuck. And then something happens. What's the worst one that you, it, one of you, go, one of you, you know, Rhino, you go first. One of our, one of our brand new airmen leaves his toolbox on a plane that's in the air for like the next six hours. Yeah, yeah we, that would always happen right at the end you'd either break a tool and lose a piece of it or you lose a tool or something uh, it was always happening like that mm-hmm. and he'd just be like standing there and you're like dude where's your toolbox oh uh, last time i had it was on uh, uh i don't remember <laughs> so you go to you go to every 130 but <laughs> literally and it's nowhere, and it's like, all right, well, let's call the plane. And then they'd get SATCOM and call the plane, and then they're like, oh, yeah, it's in the back here by the loadmaster. Sweet. Oh, but he, well, but, he, but he had his keys, so that was good, right? <laughs> I mean, at least it was locked up, right? Yeah. Hey, we had a guy that... Tool control you know, is finest, you know what I'm saying? On top of our uh, toolboxes, again, at Tyndall. There's a lot of stories from Tyndall. I was there for a while, but... <laughs> We had these, the rubber buckets, A lot you of know? Florida stories, boys. A lot of Florida, Florida stories. Yeah. 
No, it's attached to your uh, your toolbox. And usually you have the lanyard that goes through it and then you lock it back up. But we had this one guy that uh, forgot to lock up his bucket. And I think it was like more than one time. So for like that was week, always fun. Week afterwards, he had to carry around in a bucket with his hand a whole week long whenever he was at work to make sure he never <laughs> forgot his bucket. <laughs> it was always fun knocking people's buckets off their shit to see, see that, if they were to see if they were locked. Yeah. That's like the good stuff stories you hear, but like nowadays, like you get court martialed for doing something like that. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so demeaning to the airmen for knocking really? people's bucket. Oh yeah, for making them carry a bucket. Yeah, making them carry the, or, no. or like making them push a light all out to every aircraft and vacuum out every every flight deck. Dude. Like it was like sacrilege. I did that to one kid. To this day, that kid still hates me. Dude, I was uh <laughs> I was <laughs> you blatantly lied to me on a flight deck fod inspection, bro. Like, go clean that shit. I did shit like that. Dude, you know, I was an airman, and this isn't this isn't obviously an end of shift story, but this is kind of one of the hazing stories. Uh, I was an airman and I slept in like eight hours in. You know what I'm saying? Like it was almost swing shift. And so I fucking I woke up, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? It's like two o'clock. Call my flight chief. Hey, uh, so, uh, I woke up late. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm late. Sorry. You know, he's like late, late for what? I was like late for work. He was like, like this work, like late right now. It's like, yes, I'm late for work. I should have been in this morning, you know, at six, you know, now it's like two o'clock, whatever. He's like, oh. Well, we thought you were at a fucking appointment all day. It was like, oh fuck, I fucked myself, dude. He's like, all right, come in, come in. So I came in the fucking uh, swing shift expediter. Hem me up, bro. I'm in the expediter truck. He's just hemming me up, dude, for the whole time. And then he's like, fucking anybody needs a sixty? Guess who's taking it to him? I'm like, oh fuck. All right. Never again did I wake up that late. <laughs> After pushing and pulling sixties up and down the Tindle. flight line for people, they laughed yeah. at me. But you learn, I learned. Learn from your mistakes. They laughed man. and I learned. Yeah, best way to learn. Now they just cry and say, "You're doing it on purpose." Yeah, he's yeah. singling me yeah, out. I just say, "You don't like me." Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's one thing that happened to you at the end of shift? Like bad thing. Uh, the only thing I could really think of is normally because I've gotten. Raptors, you would always have an APU or uh, why can't I think of it right now? But you would have a no start mm-hmm. with the APU constantly. So there'd be times that you're <clears throat> fighting with the APU or changing a part and it never starts or stops, starts or stops, whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, that's the only real thing I think of. I remember being out there trying to work on this APU, being like in the weapons bay because. The side weapons bay, and the bottom of the APU was right there. But fucking in that hole, so like only one person could fit in there trying to swap out a part or, or whatever. That would always happen. Wow, that was a good one. Mm. Doesn't sound. I like I, it. I I I, I said my, I said mine, but uh, he Red was uh, missed it. Predisposed. I'm, I'm sorry. It was good though. Yours was very good. <laughs> Who was that? That's uh, a roommate. Mm. Uh, she, was she trying to use your Burger King points? No, she wants to use her boyfriend's Spotify. Oh. And I said, you got to log in on his, not mine. Did you tell her the on the air sign was up and lit? <laughs> I should put on air. You should. Fuck. You should get one of those little like things from Amazon. Dude, I need one of those. So fucking when kids are like, when I go to the three three shift fucking thing, you know, whatever. Uh, no, okay, so the worst thing that happened that I can remember is it was like 5.30 at Tyndall, and we were towing. We were towing a jet down to the Hush House? Yeah, down the Hush House. Last fucking thing of the day to do. We're like fucking put it in. Let's go. We're ready. You know what I mean? We've all done this before. Let's fucking do it. 
Oh, ho, ho. Little did we know fate had a fucking turn for us that morning. Uh, so whoever was driving, I forget who was driving. I was a wing walker uh, on the, who's this? Oh, yeah. I was a wing walker on the left side. And the driver, <laughs> the driver, he took a really sharp turn instead of taking the turn a little wide like he should have. And uh, the tire went into the sand. It just sank. Mm-hmm. And instead of the wing walker blowing the whistle and telling him to stop, the driver just kept driving. And you see the Coleman. And the fucking nose landing gear comes out like a toothpick. And you see the radome. And man, that oh, man, that that uh just sucks when that happens. Dude. Uh the brake rider, I don't know how the fuck he got out so fast, but he was out before the motherfucker hit the ground. Interesting because story. There's it was like his, a roadrunner cartoon. He was the jet out. dropped and he stayed in the air. He was out of the cockpit <laughs> before the radome hit the ground. It you was heard like, it. What the fuck? Well, folks, you heard it here live. And then from the coffee then we, house hour. Then we had to we had to stay until almost mm. noon that day, and we were mids. Yeah, it's a great time. Mm. Good story. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a great story. You had to be there. It's one of those things that just rattles your bones when you see it, you know. Especially when the you nose know, gear comes out like a toothpick. Not a good time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really hard to keep a stick during the coffee house out of there. <laughs> Not a good time repairing it either, you know? Remember when that raptor fell on its nose after it shut down? It was a huge fiasco. Mm-hmm. It was like shortly after I got my orders there. Yeah, and I was there for I don't know, maybe like a month, two months, something like that. And so there was a big point where you had to pin the nose gear before right. the second engine could shut down. Right. So you'd have to get in like a bunny suit, crash helmet, everything. Oh my god! And go in there and pin it. You gotta get in your mop four gear. Almost pretty much. But Six uh, boots, motherfucker. Right after that, like we were cleared not to have to do that anymore. And right after we got cleared, the next jet, well, one of the first jets that came back afterwards, again <laughs> collapsed. The nose gear collapsed right when it shut down. <laughs> fucking I had to pin oh, or I had to catch the next jet and I'm like, fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> what like, about, dude, put a pin in that nose before it shuts down so it doesn't happen again. What about one of the crafters that hit the eighteen? You were there for that? Yes. The I think it was Canadian eighteen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. My jet was in phase and I heard about it in mm-hmm. Hangar Five. It was on that uh because you know how uh the TDY guys, Combat Archer, or whatever the fuck no, it's called. I'm going to need you to draw me a map. Yes. So here's the map. The closest here's the map. spot line. Here's the... <laughs> Up. Here it is. Down. <laughs> yeah. He was yes. uh, the foreign or the Canadian F 18s were parked there on the, that last line, closest right. to the runway. Well, the Raptor was coming in and he said he lost nose wheel steering. It just went straight into the, uh, <laughs> the stack of the F-18. Canadian. And it, uh, Fuck, dude. it split the intake. So, it, like, the tail was all fucked up, but the corner or the side of the Raptor intake was had, like, a cut into it. Oh, but shit. It was down for a while. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it was an international incident. They got maple syrup <laughs> all over it, bar. They use <laughs> maple syrup all over it. Because they don't use... They don't use regular fuel in Canadian airplanes. Mm. They use maple syrup fuel. Big stuff. Not horsepower, it's moose power. Oh, that's a lot of powers. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of powers. Is that like 10, 10 horses to every one moose? Yes. Maybe more? It's one kilometer per moose. Y'all ain't ever heard of moose power. <laughs> <laughs> you never been on the back roads of Canada and 10 mooses pull up with a guy in a sleigh. You've got the wrong accent for being yeah. Canadian. No, that was perfect. It's a boot. Yeah. Eh? Have you ever seen their mooses? The mooses that come in the forest. Cheese. 
Moose are scary, man. They're really like dangerous, too. Dude, they are. They are huge. Huge. Ma! Huge. Ma! Yeah. There's huge. some fucking mooses! You're, you're driving down a snow road, like in Alaska, and you, you just would... see this moose fly out of the bushes. Oh, like, Across the runway. <laughs> during, uh, the uh, street. It, it freaks. It, they kill a lot of people. When we were yeah. up in uh, when we were up in Iowa, were you we were eating uh, when that happened? I may have been. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I dropped my oh, shit. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, shit. It rolls on rolls on the floor. So <laughs> there it goes. Extra, extra spices. Fuck. Fuck! I gotta go back oh. to the shop, at, dude. Shit. Yeah. It's horrible. You had an accident in your jeep. But I really want to see the pictures of all your tornado wrappers. <laughs> I'll post it on the our, uh, web pages or oh, that one. profiles. Me off. Oh, my tornadoes, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you just see like all this blood because I'd split my head open and stuff. There's just blood everywhere, tornado wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what was this guy on? <laughs> <laughs> so yep, that's what saved him. Tornado tornadoes rappers. and rippets. <laughs> <laughs> that's what saved him. See all those tornadoes? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we were up in uh, Isleson TDY, we were coming back from Silver Gulch. It's a brewery up there, and uh, just right on the side of the highway, dude, there was this moose. It came out of nowhere, and he was just—he's walking down the same uh, way as like the the road, and you just see how out of nowhere, just the back end of him. And then you see the giant rack uh, like sticking out. You had to like swerve mm-hmm. to not not hit him, but that could have been bad. Yeah, they kill a lot of people that run into them because the people hit their legs and then the moose come through the windshield. Oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. You get mm-hmm. a lot of polar bears up there, too? No, right, those Ileson. are way further north. Right, I- Ileson. No, uh, oh, way, way further, further north. north than that. Like, uh, uh, what's that? What's that? Barrow, Town Alaska. Barrow? Yes. I think yeah. that's the most northern town. Yeah, I don't know. It's way up there. Yeah, north Barrow's Pol- on the... No, North past no. North Pole is actually lower. Yeah. What about Bear Arizona? Do they have any in Bear Arizona? They have them in Big Bear. Mm. Not polar bears. We polar know why big you're a big bear. It's only it's, it's not far from the house. <laughs> it's super close. Super close. Fab, what do you have to say today? I like how <laughs> if I if I'm on the top right. Red's on the top, top left. Blackbeard's on the bottom, but we're all different on each, each of our screens. So, like, I look down at the bottom, and Red's over here, like looking this way, <laughs> and then Blackbeard's like <laughs> so messed up. So it's like, where are we all looking? <laughs> we're looking where everywhere. Are where are you? Where are you? We need you. Can you move the people around? I don't know. We need uh, to get uh, Goodyear on. Oh. Yeah, it'd be cool to get Goodyear. He yeah. keeps ta- he keeps he li- apparently he listens to it a lot. So come in and be like, it'd be cool say, to get- say something about the podcast. It'd be cool to get good year. Well, I think it's been a good episode. Just a bunch of random shit. Has it been that good we, yet? We we had yeah we had the cop cast hour. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're telling your uh it's been an hour. your very uh descriptive story to that smooth jazz. Listen, my descriptive story is to smooth smooth jazz always soothe people. In the mornings, nights, afternoon. I don't, I don't know. Easy listening. <laughs> easy. <laughs> Super easy listening. Um, what do you have for us today as far as veteran stuff there, buddy? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I forgot to look one up today. He's mm. ill prepared. Oh, shit. Fab, you have one? Nope. <laughs> He's going to get mad. Fab, it's okay. You no, can go be shy. I don't think he'll get mad. I don't think he'll be like, you know what, you fuckers. It's not like we can tell him to turn his camera on because. Yeah, hey, you got one? He's being really shy today. <laughs> no, he is. He's really yes. quiet today. Let's see. I think he lost his voice. You know, mm. he lost his voice. Mm. Did you find him? I don't know. Sorry. I got distracted. I was trying to find <laughs> Fab. <laughs> I think we had a uh, thing, a message about like a dog thing. Somebody submitted. Oh yeah, to you? To no, you? it was to the website or to our Facebook. I vaguely uh, remember that. Like, like veteran dogs. 
I mean, as always, you know, we don't talk about support. So there's that. Oh, yeah. Uh, You know what? Actually, I did want to bring one thing up. Um, It's kind of serious. You know what I mean? Recently, a friend of mine passed. Um, You know, he took his own life and it's unfortunate. It sucks. Uh, We hate hearing about, you know, fellow service members, fellow crew chiefs having to leave, you know, their loved ones behind because their demons got the best of them. We, you've heard it all. You've heard it all before, but don't be too prideful to reach out, please. Some, I, somebody will help. Somebody will talk to you, listen to you, whatever. You know what I mean? We'd rather uh, hear you talk about your problems or your issues than, you know, talk about you and your fun times at your eulogy or have somebody talk about you at your eulogy. So, like, seriously, reach out, please, especially if you got kids. Like, it's, it's a big deal. If anybody remembers from the like past couple episodes ago, we had little Mikey on here. Uh, little Mikey was having a rough time, but just coming on the show and being able to talk about old times and like what we did as crew chiefs and stuff, we really, we really changed, changed him up, changed how he kind of viewed everything and, and it really helped him out. So again, I know we're not that big of a podcast yet, but any Air Force crew chiefs, military, Marine Corps, whatever you are, don't feel free, don't feel free to, you know, don't be shy. Don't be like Fab and be quiet because he's not here. Right. Come on the show. Yeah. And like, like Red said before, we won't even record. We can all just talk. It's, it's just. We can talk about Red's know, uh, horrible right. porn career that he, he won't start. Max McVicker all day, bro. All he's day. been banned. AI banned him. <laughs> been <laughs> starting it. <laughs> AI already told everybody. I've been banned like motherfucker. <laughs> but no, just dude, do it for your family. If not, if not for yourself, do it for your family. Do it for those people around you that love you. I know that, you know, that uh, it leaves like a lasting impression, especially if your kids are uh, six, seven, eight, kind of know what's going on a little bit. You know what I mean? It leaves like Mm -hmm. a a shadow over them until they're uh, until they're going to their therapist when they're older about it because they don't they don't get they don't understand it. They don't understand why. You know what I mean? And they they search for the reasons why. So just do it for your, your family. Reach out for your family to, to help them. Yeah, no matter how, how hard it feels and gets, it'll, it works out eventually in the end. So don't right. give in. The sun always breaks through the darkness, boys. Always. So, but with that, this has been Coffee Talk Hour or Keys to the Jet. We love you guys. Thank you for oh, listening. I think I should bring up the, the dog thing. I found it. Just oh, real yeah. quick. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, Please. So it's I'm called sorry, Guardian. Man. Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs. And their little thing okay. here is Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs works through their incredible dogs to make a difference in the lives of those struggling with a variety of disorders, including PTSD, uh, traumatic brain injuries, seizure disorders, mobility issues, and more. But it looks like they get a, like, military, like working dogs and stuff and hmm. get them out there for you. Okay, they get they get mil. Do they get older military working dogs, and do they so they help with veterans? Obviously, we help provide service dogs to veterans and individuals struggling with a variety of disorders. Oh, okay. So they're not a they're not a program that helps save or rescue um, uh, military working dogs. Uh, They they just provide service dogs. That's still really they help out the vets. Still, that's still really good, really good service. I've seen really programs like that to where, like, I want to, like, rescue one of the old military working dogs. I would love to. I would love to. I mean, dude's going to be, like, you know, trying to find a bomb in my butthole. Yeah, he's going to be, he's gonna like, be sniffing out your find drugs. something else it. in that butthole. <laughs> Damn it, Rocco, sniff- stop. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be sniffing out your drugs the whole time, dude. <laughs> Narc dogs, bro. But, I mean, hey, <laughs> they got to have, they got to have second chances. Sometimes. You're off work. You're off work. <laughs> You're off work. <laughs> Leave my Colombian Bam Bam alone. Why do you have so much peanut butter? (laughs) (laughs) No, I will not go to Costco and get you more peanut butter. Get out of here. Oh, man. (laughs) man. Sorry, Roscoe. I don't mean to be so (laughs) beefy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, thanks for joining the, uh, the coffee hour with the group here. This has been a great time. I hope you enjoy your drive and get into your drive safe. Drive safe and think about us every every time you're uh, just sitting there. Think about our soft voices. You heard it here first from 
Radio Keys the Jet. That's right. Keys of the Jet. And I think we're going to join us on that note. We love you guys. Stay Go ahead tuned. and grab those strong ropes on those chocks and home from the tires. You mean the ones mm-hmm. attached? You mean the ones attached to uh, Blackbeard's head? Mm-hmm. <laughs> More like Fab's. Well, let's we'll leave that. They're connected yeah. to the beads. One more thing before we leave. Uh, where can you find us? There, Blackbeard. Oh yeah, we got the normal Facebook, Spotify, Buzzfeed, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, Discord. Discord, yes. Soon, <clears throat> soon we'll be launching Patreon, <clears throat> and also on our Buzzsprout link, you can subscribe for three dollars a month to the show and get you some content, especially for you. You can get we can get a whole bag of butterscotches sent to you from Keys to the Jet, courtesy of Mayor. The mayor loves giving us butterscotches. <laughs> Give me that butterscotch. <laughs> The old crew chief style. But first, a Ned and a Scotch. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. It's been great. Yeah. 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 This has been a good show. Chalks out. Love you guys. Love Bye-bye. you.